Okay, um, hello and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, and also good afternoon to those who are in the same time zone as mine. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Professor Rifat for giving me the opportunity um, today to share a bit of information, knowledge and idea uh, in a topic that I hope um, everyone will find it interesting. Um, today, I will be talking about a building integrated photovoltaic thermal solar collector specifically on facade application. And this is uh, basically in line with the topic of the research that is recently funded by my university. Um, so in my talk today, um, the presentation will be covering uh, the following key subtopics. I'm going to introduce uh, very briefly about um, what is uh, building integrated photovoltaic thermal facade and based on the literature from uh, other researchers, um, I will um, share with everyone about different types of BIPVT facade and some of the innovation that has been done by uh, other researchers on, in this field of research. And then um, my presentation today will also cover a bit on the case studies and the demonstration prototype that has been done worldwide. And towards the end of the lecture, um, I'm going to share some ideas or concept uh, involving BIPVT facade that uses semi-transparent thin film photovoltaic and vacuum glazing with desiccant potentially uh, can be applied for protected agriculture. And finally, um, a bit of discussion and um, slides on the challenges and the economic aspect of the BIPV. Uh, as for the introduction, um, so for those who already know, um, uh, PV for building applications can be installed in three ways. Uh, we can either apply it, uh, B, uh, PV uh, in the form of open rack mounted PV, or we can also apply PV for building application in, in the form of building added or applied PV. And finally, um, we can apply PV in the form of building integrated uh, PV or BIPV. For the first two type of installations, so basically the function of the PV are generally to just to produce electricity. But for the building integrated PV, uh, basically this, the PV itself, or the PV panel component itself is integrated into the building structure, replacing uh, the materials into the building. For, for example, um, the window components, the facade or the roofs. Um, so very briefly about uh, what is building facade for those who may not be familiar with it. So building facade basically involves all of the external faces of a building. So therefore a building facade is very important element of a building because it is only not, it's not only it is responsible to give the aesthetic features of the building. Uh, at the same time, it is also performing as the primary uh, barrier against external weather elements. So a building facade must be made of a strong and durable materials. But nowadays, uh, architects and engineers and builders are more interested towards uh, building facades that can um, contribute towards low building energy consumption. Uh, and that is how, um, that is why architects and engineers, builders nowadays have considered the implementation of photovoltaic panels to replace the conventional building facade materials. And as a result, what we can get is a building facade that can harness renewable energy in the form of electricity. So um, in the slides here is an image of a building um, owned by Hanji uh, uh, Company. It's a huge uh, company in China that produce, um, that manufactures uh, some semi-transparent tin film PV type. So um, basically this building, uh, the, the building facade is covered by a semi-transparent type thin film PV. This building, if I'm not mistaken, is situated in Beijing, China. Um, so in general, uh, there are three different types of PV panel that can uh, be used for building integrated um, application. Uh, the first one is the opaque panel. The second one is a semi-transparent type, what, but with uh, opaque PV cells. And the third type is a semi-transparent type with tin film PV panel. Um, okay, uh, more on BIPV facade. B 
we know that with the technology advancement and more research has been done uh, in this uh, PV research that the efficiency of solar cell technology is basically increases and the cost of the PV technology has shown a decreasing trend uh, over the years. So uh, as a result, uh, we found there is a growing number of successful projects around the world that has demonstrates that conventional building uh, facade can be effectively replaced by active PV. How about, uh, however, uh, we must remember that for a typical a PV panel, um, the one that is commercially available in the market, only up to about 20% of the absorbed solar irradiance can be converted into PV, only up to. So meaning that almost 80% of the absorbed solar irradiance will be wasted in the form of heat. So without a proper heat removal or thermal management uh, of the BIPV, this will definitely lead to unwanted uh, thermal stress to the PV structure. And at the same time, it will cause an issue with the PV panel performance. And also another thing to remember is that, as you can see in the schematics here, um, it's an example of a BIPV facade uh, employing the use of semi-transparent type opaque PV cells. We can see here that there will be a thermal gain that can be directly um, received from the non-packing factor area of the semi-transparent type. And also because only about 20% of the absorbed solar radiance by the PV cells is converted into uh, electricity, meaning that the rest will be um, re-emitted into the building uh, in the form of heat. And this will give a significant impact on the indoor environment and it will cause um, an impact to the energy consumption um, by heat or cooling or ventilation system in the building. Um, I'm just sharing here uh, an example of a research. Um, when I was in Nottingham, I was fortunate enough to be given the chance to work on a project on photovoltaic um, using semi uh, using semi transparent dome PV glazing. So basically, um, during that experiment, uh, the experiment was done in in a mild weather condition where the temperature uh, the ambient temperature is around 20 degrees Celsius. But what we found out from that research or from the experiment is that the internal surface temperature of the PV glazing can reach up to 40 to 45 degrees Celsius. And from our computer simulation, if the similar uh, type of um, building integrated photovoltaic is applied in a hot climate country like Malaysia, for instance, the temperature can reach up to 60 degrees Celsius and above. So if we can transform this heat into useful thermal energy, what we can get is actually a useful power, uh, a useful electrical power, and at the same time, useful thermal energy from the same uh, facade uh, area. And this brings us to the definition of building integrated photovoltaic thermal system. So basically, a BIPVT uh, facade is a BIPV that combined with a solar thermal component. So we can get both electrical energy and also thermal energy from the same facade area. And at the same time, due to the PV cooling by the working fluid, we can also get an enhanced electrical energy performance from the BIPV facade. All right. Now, um, so in general, a BIPVT facade will recover all the useful excess heat from the PV modules, and we can use the heat uh, directly uh, for the heating application in the building, or sometimes uh, the BIPVT component can be uh, connected uh, to the air source heat pump to preheat domestic hot water, or we can also uh, use the heated um, thermal energy from the BIPVT to uh, connect it to the desiccant system for cooling, for instance. Uh, so now I'm going to like share with everyone like a, a different types of BIPVT facade. Uh, before I continue, uh, in general, uh, they are, uh, in general, um, our building is heated by three thermal sources. The first one is the heat from the heating system in the building itself. And the second one is the heat that coming through the outer facade of the building. And finally, the heat comes from the fresh air circulating inside the building. So the use of solar energy in buildings is usually passive, and sometimes uh, it also involves the use of tram wall to store the thermal energy and which 
later on will be re-emitted uh, to heat up the building. So uh, one of the application of BIPVT air collector is by combining the BIPVT component with a tromol. So for example, in the first um, example here, we have the PV panel um, placed on the external surface of the glazing. So as a result, um, the heat that, uh, sorry, as a result, the air working fluid that is flow behind the PV panel will extract this unwanted heat and uh, pass it to the hashback system or the storage system in that particular building. Um, and also, this kind of configuration is generally uh, beneficial, especially uh, during summertime where the working fluid air can actually help to reduce the heating of the building. Um, and the second type of design is whereby uh, we place the PV panel on the surface of the charm wall itself. So what happened is that uh, the amount, uh, the absorbed solar irradiance will be transmitted into the charm wall and it will be stored and later on re-emitted into the building. And it is particularly beneficial uh, for application uh, during winter. Um, so um, for us to have a better understanding, it is helpful for us to have an idea of the energy transfer or the heat transfer involves. So as you can see here, this is a very simple representation of the heat transfer analysis in regard to a BIPVT system. So basically without the thermal component, there will be a fraction or amount of heat that is wasted. It is, uh, sorry, the amount of solar irradiation that is wasted in the form of heat. And also without the thermal component, what you will get from the BIPV component is just a total energy that is contributed by the electrical part of the BIPV. But uh, with the use of a thermal component in BIPVT facade, what we will have is a working fluid air that will extract this unwanted heat and use that for uh, space heating or for other type of thermal energy uh, application. So what you can have now is the increment in the total energy usage uh, from the BIPVT facade. So now instead of just electrical, we can also get thermal energy from the BIPVT facade. Right. Um, well, the second type of BIPVT facade is involving the use of double skin glass wall. So this is uh, an example of an image that is taken from a research uh, conducted by uh, a group of researchers from Sydney, Australia. So uh, basically, uh, in a double skin glass wall, what happened is that, as you can see here, there is an internal and external glass layer for the building, and there will be an air cavity uh, between uh, the two glass layers. Uh, for a BIPVT application, normally the external glass layer is made of a semi-transparent type PV panel. So what we will, we will get is a visible lighting uh, for the building, um, while uh, at the same time we can also get useful thermal and also electrical from the BIPVT facade. And the second type, uh, the third type of BIPVT facade is uh, the combination with um, hot water system. Uh, usually for this type of BIPVT facade, uh, the water heat absorber is directly attached on the back surface of the PV panel. So the fraction of solar irradiation that is not turned into electricity will be directly absorbed by the uh, water heat exchanger and transform into useful thermal energy. And at the same time, because of we are placing uh, the thermal component uh, behind, right behind the PV panel. At the same time, what happened is that we can reduce the amount of the heat that is transmitted into the, into the building. So this is particularly very useful uh, for application in hot and climate countries because we can use, we can reduce the thermal energy gain into the building. All right. Uh, speaking about innovation in the IPVT facade, um, to be honest, I am particularly interested in um, innovation um, uh, research uh, that has been introduced by uh, many researchers. Um, as you can see here, there are researchers who integrated BIPVT with a heat pump system. So what happened is that the evaporator of a heat pump is linked to the heated air from the BIPVT 
As a result, the COP of the heat pump will increase because the compressor now is doing less work to uh, increase the temperature uh, for the hot water and also for the heating application, for instance. Uh, another innovation in VIPBT facade is when a group of researchers uh, in China, okay, this is an example, they have introduced uh, the use of PCM wall together with BIPVT facade. So what happened is that uh, during the summer, uh, the PCM the PCM will absorb heat from the room and also uh, the heat, uh, the air working fluid will absorb heat from the PB and the PCM and then it will remove through the upper shield number one. So uh, during winter, what happened is that the PCM and the solar heat gain from the PV will be used to, to be supplied into uh, the room uh, for space heating. Um, actually, there are many more innovation in uh, BIPVT facade research. Some of the researchers uh, also introduced uh, the use of thermoelectric wall uh, together with BIPVT facade. But most of the researchers are actually uh, at lab scale or at fundamental level. Um, uh, to be honest, um, when I when I study about BIPVT facade, I am particularly interested to see real case application um, to see whether this technology actually has the potential to be brought to the next level, uh, whether this technology actually has its, um, its uh, practicality. So uh, uh, from my research, I found a few researchers uh, that actually have used VIPVT facade uh, in a real skill application. For example, uh, there is a building that was built in Lisbon in Portugal uh, back in 2006. Uh, from their study, they found out that even during winter, the temperature of the BIPVT uh, for the air working fluid can reach up to 30 degrees Celsius, and it, it actually can be used for, uh, for space heating application. Um, and then there is also a research uh, conducted by a group of researchers in Hong Kong, uh, um, where they have investigated the use of BIPVT with a hot water system. And basically from their research, they found out that the total efficiency that can be achieved from their system is about 50% in total. Uh, but one thing that we have to remember is because the BIPV uh, uh, facade uh, for the PV panel is being installed in a vertical configuration and it is not at its optimum angle. So therefore the performance might not be as good as um, the performance of the PV panel when it is being tilted at its optimum angle. And this is a research um, from a master's uh, thesis of a student in Canada. Uh, in his research, he has introduced the use of unglazed transpired BIPVT air solar collector. So it's different from the other type of uh, BIPVT facade. So basically for this type of uh, collector design, uh, what happened is that the air will flow into the back surface of the PV panel through the perforated area between the PV um, uh, from the PV panel. So, uh, and what is what I found interesting from his research is that um, uh, when he report in his master thesis that an area of as much as 288 meters squared um, of a building has been replaced by a BIPVT and um, during the installation or uh, during the installation of the BIPVT, basically um, the component has been um, put uh, very closely to the hashback system of that building. So from his, uh, invest, from his experimental data, we found out that uh, the annual electricity production of that BIPVT can reach up to 22 megawatt hour per year and the annual heat production can lead up to 55 megawatt hour per year. And the next research, uh, this is, um, is, is quite interesting because when I look into the research on BIPVT uh, facade, um, the, 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 the real application, the, the final real application that I found that is available in the literature is between the year 2012 and 14, 16. And only recently, there is another new case study that have been um, carried out by a group of researcher in Korea. So as you can see here uh, in the image here, they have applied the BIPVT facade on 
on the, this area here, if you can see the dark uh, colored building surface. So basically, uh, in their research, they found out that when the outdoor airflow temperature is around 20 degrees Celsius, the PV internal temperature could reach up to 47 degrees Celsius. And the outlet air that is useful for space heating is as high as 40 degrees Celsius. Um, but I think to remember is that if you read their publication or their paper, uh, so basically they have introduced a very special type of uh, absorber behind the BIPVT component uh, in such a way that it enhanced the heat removal by the air working through it. And the most recent study on uh, BIPVT uh, in for real scale application is also done by a group of researchers in Korea. So if you can see here, um, basically in their research, what they did, they have connected the BIPVT uh, into the air handling units uh, system of the building. So from their research, it's, quite, it's also quite promising because he found out, they found out that uh, the BIPV collector can reach up to 32 degrees, which was 50 degrees Celsius higher than the outdoor air temperature. So in general, we can say that from the research conducted by all these researchers, the results are quite promising. Um, in other words, that BIPV has the potential uh, BIPVT has the potential to, um, to produce um, high grade energy and at the same time a very useful thermal energy from the same facade area and at the same time the thermal component is very useful uh, in terms of managing the thermal stress caused by the heat by the solar heat gain. Oh well, um, well our at our research institute, um, I also have projects that are related to the BIPVT facade, but because, um, and currently I am working on a double pass BIPVT facade project, but the project is just started. So I'm afraid that I cannot disclose uh, the design here and also some of the, um, the details. But nevertheless, like recently, when I wrote a research proposal or for a different project, I came across um, an idea about implementing a double pass BIPVT facade for a protected, a protected uh, cropping application. So uh, basically in Malaysia, because the weather is very hot and humid, we do not need a high temperature uh, greenhouse like uh, in the UK, for instance. And sometimes what happened is that in the protected uh, cropping chamber, the, the, the humidity level can be very high. So a very good humidity and temperature control system is very crucial to make sure that uh, the, the plants do not get uh, too much condensation or too much um, uh, water vapor uh, inside the chamber. So by applying uh, this BIPVT facade, the idea is that uh, when the humid fresh air supply is supplied into the chamber, what happened is the humid fresh air supply can be uh, turned into a warm, dry, fresh air supply using a desiccant wheel. But later on, uh, in order to um, regenerate the desiccant, we will need heat. And this is when the heat from the BIPVT facade is taking into action here. And the reason why we introduce uh, the use of vacuum glazing is because uh, vacuum glazing has a very low U value. And at the same time, because of we use glazing here, um, we can get visible lighting transmitted through the chamber. And at the same time, the amount of uh, the electricity produced by the PV panel can be used to, to power the LED light so we can get a 24 hours um, light for the, for the plant to grow. Um, it's still in the concept or idea stage at the moment, and we are planning to go further if um, uh, if if we can uh, prove the, the idea at, at, at least at the scientific um, level. Um, so here is some of the representation of the three D diagram. Um, okay, uh, so before uh, I finish. On my lecture today, um, I'm just going to share uh, some I, some overview on the economic feasibility of the BIPVT system. So, so basically, uh, we can say that BIPVT 
um, market potential is can be reflected by the economy of a BIPV. And recently, there are some researchers who propose um, a life cycle cost analysis for a BIPV system, and they have made an attempt to uh, monetize the, soci the societal and environmental benefits of a BIPV system. And then uh, from their research, they found out that um, for this is a, the, the research is done by uh, based on the case study uh, for European countries. So they found that um, for the south facing uh, BIPV facade in some countries in the Europe can produce much more significant um, uh, significant uh, energy saving uh, in terms of uh, the total income from the electricity production. But nevertheless, for the West, East and North facing facade, uh, the researchers found out that the total energy saving, the, the, sorry, the total saving from the environmental and societal advantages is actually quite significant. And last but not least, um, I'm just interested to find out uh, the research trend in the BIPVT facade research. And I found out that uh, it's quite interesting if we can see from the research trend here um, at the beginning of the, uh, sorry, from, uh, from the year 2000 and 2010, we can see that there are not so many research that have been done on this topic. But then suddenly from the 2010 to 2016, we can see a, a drastic increase in the amount of the research that has been conducted uh, in this field of research. But then, um, sadly, we can see that the trend is started to decreasing slowly. So if we look at this, um, basically, there are so many research gaps that we can identify uh, from the research of uh, in the IPVT facade, for facade application. Uh, among them is like lack of awareness, low inefficiency, and cost, market limitation, high installation costs, lack of expertise. So uh, also in one of the research uh, paper that I read, like clearly the researchers mentioned that there are not many research that has been done uh, in terms of the economic analysis, and there are not many research that has been done on real uh, application of uh, the, the facade itself. So I think, um, especially pointing at the low efficiency um, of the vertical uh, implementation of the PV panel, I think um, uh, there are research that we can do in order to enhance the performance of the PV panel by employing uh, a concentrated solar panel, for example, by considering uh, the changes in the incidence angle throughout the year uh, to make sure that although the panel is being installed in a vertical uh, position, we can still get an optimum output from uh, the pedal. So I guess that's all uh, from me today. All right, thank you. Asila, thank you very much for yeah. your uh, very nice presentation. Now, we, colleague, do you have any questions for Hasila? Any questions? Uh, she's done a very nice presentation. I want your views. <laughs> Anything, any comments or questions? Uh, can I ask a question, please? Yes, please. Oh, yes, please. Uh, have you used any heat, have you found any heat pipe applications associated with the um, solar PV or the back of the solar PV? Yes, um, I found uh, quite plenty of research that has been conducted uh, on the application of heat pipe uh, behind uh, solar PV. I think even the SAFA has done uh, quite a few of research involving uh, PV panel and heat pipe. Am I right, Yeah, the, the from that. Uh, Did I yeah. ask a supplementary? Well, what, how is the interface between the heat pipe and the and the uh, and the panel? Is it is there a fluid? Is there a fluid or is it a uh, PVT or or what what type of um, optimum uh, interface was identified? Please. Can I yeah, so basically, we've done quite research on heat pipes and combined with the PV. The issue about with heat pipes is really whatever orientation, the cost, the cost of heat pipes is so high. So that really um, make, make the thing uneconomical cost-wise. Uh, 
So unless uh, there are very few company make heat pipes, and I think if you make heat pipes, I, I don't even I don't even make heat pipes. Quite difficult to. Thank, the fridge thank you. Thank you. That was the reason for my question. If you could use fewer heat pipes with some interface, then the cost would be reduced. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions, colleagues? Uh, so I ask uh, Hasila, what, what, what the reason for this res recent research declining? Why we see drop in PVT? That's a very What's the reason? Did somebody decide not to, uh, not, not to bother about it, think it's not to, uh, viable. Why? Why is that? You think? Well, I, I think it's it's potentially because of, um, but when we combine uh, PV and thermal, although we can get the output um, a, a higher output in total, but still the capital cost is still high. And if you want to compare, for example, uh, the performance of a PVT with solar thermal collector, is individual. Uh, it, it cannot beat the performance of solar thermal collector on its own. So yeah. very cost -wise. Yes, it's, it's mainly cost-wise, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, colleagues? So uh, nothing now, but we, uh, if you have no questions, you could uh, all, always uh, send email or uh, there are some questions in chat. Uh, Zani, do you want to, uh, um, this led to the same question? Maybe um, Peter already answered the question, so that's, yeah. Okay, uh, it's nothing that I'd like to all to thank you. First of all, thank our speakers for their excellent presentation. I'd like to thank you all for today coming to, uh, to uh, attend this uh, online lecture. We can continue with this online lecture and very much appreciate your support. And we said we'll always try to do as much as we can in terms of supporting members. And I think we we now uh, we're waiting for situation to get better in terms of the pandemic. So hopefully we have our conference in August. We're hoping that we have the conference uh, this year. So I'd like to thank you. And uh, we'll be in touch. Is anyone we'll be in touch soon about the next two online lectures? Have a good day. Thank you very much, colleagues.